What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. It's time for a little bit more Long Dark. We're making pretty good progress right now. The next part is gonna be a lot though. The next part's gonna be tough, so buckle on in. Buckle on in. I want my Summit Soda. Yes I do. It gives calories and hydration. That makes it doubly useful to me. Double the trouble, double the fun. Anything inside of here? Nope! Nothing inside that crate. Crate, you're useless to me. Sit in the corner and feel bad about yourself. I think that we got a couple of containers over here, though, and given the loot variety that we've had in this Interloper playthrough, normally I barely even search all this stuff because an Interloper, like, you don't get anything out of it anyway. Like, I search it, okay? I search it, but I search it in kind of like a cynical, grumpy way. Whereas, I wonder if that's going to be enough to get me warm. One hour of resting. Let's find out. Let's look. Let's see how the meter lies. It almost got us there. It almost got us there, you lying liar you. You lying liar meter you. Your falsehoods are not unknown to me. Uh, you know, it might be a good idea to get some wood while we're over here, too. We may have to make a fire while we're in the next zone. It's gonna get... It's gonna get chilly, alright? It's gonna get worse before it gets better. There you go. We got enough wood to where we can at least make a fire if things start going wrong. Actually, the temperature is not that bad right now. If we were going to make that trip, now would be the time to do it. So let's take a little trip. Take a little trip. Take a little trip with Splatty. Alright, so we're going to go off to the left over here. We're going to make our way to Mystery Lake. And everything's going to be okay. Nothing bad is going to happen. We're definitely not going to get eaten by a bear or a moose. The worst part about the moose is that it eats you. It doesn't even eat you. It just, like, kicks your ass and then just, like, leaves you there for no reason whatsoever. Mooses are the ultimate bullies in games like this. Like, they will moosinate you with extreme, extreme, I don't even know what word I'm looking at. Extreme aggression. There we go. That's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna call it. They, you don't even need proximity. Mooses will come and get you, man. They will part your body like the Red Sea. I am Moses. I will lead my people to the... Oh my god. I had an idea for a cartoon, everybody. It's like Moses, but it's a moose. I am Moses. <laughs> I'm already giggling about it. His name is a pun. Alright. Humor accomplished. Going to coastal highways exit. Alright, so here we are. In the uh, Raven Falls railway line in the ravine. The ravine, kind of dangerous. It's not the worst place in the game. It's not the best place in the game. Just make sure you don't slip and fall, because if you do, it's going to be a fairly decent drop. Probably not going to survive it. It's probably really, really going to hurt. But only for a second. Only for a second. Uh, watch out on these rails right here. I honestly would never do anything like that in a survival situation. You don't know if the rails are frosty or anything else. I'd probably just jump it if I had to. I'd probably just jump it. Wouldn't even mess with the rails right there. It's just, it's not safe, alright? It's not safe. Let's go ahead and cross on over. A little beautiful waterfall over there. Uh, look at the water, everybody. Isn't it majestic? Yeah, looking out right now, you can't really get down to any of those areas right there, so I wouldn't even bother trying to go down there. Uh, there are some little areas that you should search on this map where you can pick up a few things here and there that'll make your life a little bit easier. Oh, anyways, let's continue trucking. There are, like, some hot spots we probably want to hit up. They're not, like, hot spots the same way I would describe other hot spots in the game in terms of loot, but they still have, like, decent loot, and you should probably swing through because it's one of those zones... You're more than likely never going to come here again. Like, after you go through it once, you're either going left to right or right to left when you come through here. And frankly, my experience has been that, like, I usually only come through the ravine once per playthrough. And then I kind of settle down somewhere else and do what I do. I'm actually going to try to go through and make a bunch of snow shelters once we get to Mystery Lake, too. Just so no matter where we end up, we have a place where we can sleep outside and we have a place where we can sleep inside. So that I'm not trying to craft a snow shelter under duress, which is never a good time to do that kind of stuff. Now, there should be a bunch of sticks over here. We're going to need those. 
The more we have, the better. But actually, this trip has gone pretty well. I thought this cross-country trip was going to take us like four or five episodes to get done. I was a little bit worried that we were going to bog down and people were going to get bored or whatever. But I, I figure if you're here, you're probably already fans of The Long Dark. You probably already like the game, like the same way that I like it. And part of the appeal of this game is just like the feeling of isolation, of just walking around and having nobody, and just being on your own. And that's, I think, a big part of the ambience of the game. And so anyways, that's one of the reasons I like it. There's a lot of, like, survival games out there where there's, like, zombies or something chasing you and trying to kill you or whatever. I'm actually a big fan of the fact that The Long Dark does not have any of that. Uh, I like the fact that it's just man or woman against nature in this game. It's just you banging your head against a hostile environment and hoping you come out the victor. And sort of like knowing that you're going to die at some point, but seeing how far you can continue to go. I think my... Usually I get up to like 40 or 50 days on Interloper before I get bored and I just like, eh, I restart. I like the beginning of Interloper the best. Like the first like week is always the best on Interloper because that's when you're still struggling, you're still trying to find stuff. You know, you don't have, like, an infinite supply of water already readily available. You don't have an infinite supply of food just sitting around. It's just once you get the hatchet and everything else, it just becomes, like, a slightly more difficult stalker. Whereas, at the beginning, it still feels like interloper, you know? Alright, so this spot right here... This looks different. can't decide if it actually is different. There we go. It's not different. I'm on the wrong trail right now. It's not different. I'm on the wrong trail. I just needed a landmark. I navigate by landmarks. There's two different types of thinkers or two different types of navigators. Some people navigate naturally and some people navigate by landmarks. And those are the two varieties of people in the world. It has to do with whether or not you favor the left or the right brain when you process things. I, I navigate by landmarks. If I can see a landmark and I can get my relative position based on the landmark, I can basically navigate like anywhere. And I'll probably be fine. That's usually why one of the first things I do in the field is find the tallest mountain and shoot an azimuth to it so that I know what the bearing of that mountain is to my position. And so like no matter what, I can triangulate on a map like how far I moved using trig. Nice and easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I don't think. Ooh, do I want to dissect this over here? Ooh, it's risky. Oh, it's so risky. But the hide, it's so useful. Hope the weather doesn't change. Oh, wow, we're gaining status right now. Oh, my God. Hell yeah. Okay. All right, game. All right, game. I'll take that. Oh, we got a fresh deer hide. Nice. Like, we can actually use that to make some boots or something later on. Now, people have probably been asking, like, what is the difference between trying to survive in Mystery Lake versus any other zone? Well, Mystery Lake comes with some tacit benefits, and there's a reason I like it. First and foremost, it's the one that I'm the most familiar with. It doesn't matter where I am on Mystery Lake, I always know where I am. It's the map that came out when the game first released in Alpha. Therefore, I've played it a ton. Like, I just know that map. I know where everything is. I know where the best spots are. Two, it's got access to all the saplings you're going to need for bows and also the saplings that you're going to require for arrows. A lot of maps only have one or the other. Mystery Lake has both. Three, easy access to a forge. And four, that forge is outside, which doesn't sound like a good thing, but it actually is a good thing. Because forging usually takes like six or seven hours. You don't want to do it inside. If you do it inside, you're going to get cabin fever. And there's nothing worse than dying to cabin fever and losing all of your freshly smithed tools. Right when you're starting to get like onto easy street, somebody sideswipes you and takes you off the highway. You don't want that. You don't want that at all. And so anyways, the, the forge is outside. That way you don't get cabin fever while you're creating all of your tools and stuff. Uh, some of the downsides to being in Mystery Lake, lots of wolves. Lots of choke points. Those choke points are frequently filled with wolves, which means you have to go all the way around and take a completely different path than you were going to take initially. Please don't let there be a bear inside of here. It's beginning to look a lot like bears miss. Everywhere we go is 
there any coal in this cave? I just want it to put in my backpack. Anybody? No, there's no coal. Hmm. Thought there was coal around here somewhere, but I guess I'm wrong. Doot 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 doot. Do 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 yeah do 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 what do 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 I was gigging Cuddy cutting it up. All right, so let's go back over this way. We have two deer hides right now. That means we can make some pretty baller boots. Oop, there's a coal. I need that. I need at least like ten of these. If I can't get ten coal, by the time we get to Mystery Lake, things are gonna get complicated. Not super complicated. I can still work around it, but it's going to get a little complicated. Now, the only hard part about where we're going right now is the possibility that there may be wolves at the gate the second we zone into the next map. I'm going to drink a coffee. There was a reason that I created these. I need energy. I'm actually going to down two of these bad boys real quick. Perfect. Two coffees, and as you can see, our energy meter has gone up, and we now lose less energy every single time we sprint or walk or do whatever it is that we're doing. Good stuff. Helpful. Coffee is probably one of the best items in the game. I would never travel without at least, like, two or three of them on you. They just help. They just help. I think there's cattails over here, and whereas right now we don't need them, in the future we definitely will... So I'm thinking about grabbing a couple cattails while I'm over here, too. You should never turn down an opportunity to get some free cattails. There we go. 150 calories apiece. That means you can eat about five of them a night and be able to sleep and get full resting benefits without, you know, having to eat anything else like your preserved food. So I would save the preserved food, but I forgot about the cattails over here in this little creek area. We'll grab these real fast. If we can get an extra 1,500, 2,000 calories, I would feel quite a bit safer about our sojourning. I have enough coffee to where I'm not worried about my energy levels. The temperature is looking good thanks to our double toque action we got going on right now. I'll probably ditch most of the cattail heads because they're not that helpful. Yeah, I think we've just pulled like 1,500 calories out of this bush over here. Nice. Good stuff. I don't see anything else over there, but hey, having 50 or 60 cattail stocks, really, really good plan when you're playing on Interloper. And when you start to run out, you go to the next map over, you go on a little foraging trip, you get 50 or 60 more of them, bring them on back to base, eat them just like you would anything else. I don't think there's anything useful back here. At best, we're going to find like some... We might find some metal or something. Oh, good. More matches. Nice. That sounds good. Yeah, I was going to say, I think there's a scrap metal spawn back here, but I don't think there's too much else. Oh, kerosene. Okay, I'll take that. I need that for torches, actually, so that works out great. That is immensely helpful, because now we can make a torch, and when we want to make a fire, we can just light the torch instead of having to light a match. And the torch is a reusable fire starter. We haven't found the magnesium striker yet. It is somewhere. It does spawn on Interloper, but you got to find it first. And sometimes I find it, like, first thing, and I know where the spawns are on Mystery Lake for the Magnesium Striker. We'll definitely check those out. The Magnesium Striker basically saves you matches for a good month or so of survival if you're careful with it. Especially if you're using the Magnesium Striker to strike a torch and then using the torch to light things. Much easier, because you have a 100% chance to light a torch, but you have, like, a 60% chance at baseline value to light up ye old campfire from scratch. We need to get onto this bridge over here. There's a coal right there too. Good. I need this coal supply to be to be solid. When we go to forge when we go to forge I'm going to end up probably making about 10 arrowheads. I like to have 10 to 15 arrows because they break every now and again when you fire them and so it's good to have replacements. You can salvage the arrowhead after you fire it if you saw where the arrow went so that's also helpful. But Mm, there's a bunny tron over there. Do I want to kill the bunny tron? I do want to kill the bunny tron. Let's go murder. Let's uh, let's go wipe out the rabbit over here. I am carrying a lot of loot right now, so we're gonna be kind of noisy. There we go. Sorry, little dude. It's gonna be a bad day. I'm gonna take all your hairs away. 
And all those bunnies gonna die today. Hey, it's gonna be a bad day. All right, let's head on into Mystery Valley, which is right over here. Uh, there is a little cutback right there that they've added. I don't know exactly where that goes. Like, there's a little walkway there that wasn't there before, I don't think. Unless my memory is just, like, really, really failing me right now. But I don't recall that being there. Yeah, deer tracks on this side. We're actually going to have to hope and pray that there's no wolves on the other side of this. But off we go. Uh, this is where Mystery Lake is. This is the Mystery Lake exit. On the western side of the map, I think. I don't know. I'd have to look at a Mystery Lake map, though. I don't remember how Mystery Lake's roads are oriented. If they're north to south or if they're west to east. Okay. So there is frequently a wolf spawn right here next to these shacks. I was listening for breathing, in case you were wondering what I was doing. I was listening for the sound of wolves breathing or anything else happening. I'm really not trying to get eaten right now. We're actually looking solid. I have enough energy left to make the run all the way back to the lodge where I like to hole up. But I don't think that I'm gonna. I think we're just gonna play this nice and safe for right now. Come on. Come on, Peacoat. Nope. Nothing. Ski jacket, Peacoat. The game is just being a sloppy hater right now. It's being the sloppiest of haters. Painkillers are nice. I'll take those. Definitely won't turn him down. Ah, there's our little buddy. I knew he was going to be over there. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to pass time for a minute. i got to cook dinner. And we'll make a little fire over here. Only have one accelerant. I think I'd rather save it. I think I'd rather save it. We'll just start the fire the hard way. Tonight we'll try to craft that torch too so that we're no longer wasting matches. Normally, like, you have, like, 25 matches for, like, an entire interloper run. I don't know what's up with this interloper run where I have, like, 900 matches. But that's one of the reasons why I haven't really been worrying about making the torch too much. I think that should be enough. Mm, this meat's in rough shape. Hopefully, it kind of gets a little bit nicer. No guarantees, though. So those went up to 84%. Definitely better. I'll probably eat all of this tonight. We just leveled up to one cooking, which is great. That means we get 10% more calories, which means off of a big meal like venison. Oh, no. I added my coal to the fire. Weak. Oh, I burned my other one. That was my bad. I didn't mean to. We'll probably eat all of this right now. Hopefully we don't get food poisoning. That would suck. But this should keep us squared away for a long, long time. There you go. When you find food, you have yourself a good meal. It's going to help. Like a good meal in a survival situation, always a solid idea. I highly recommend it. All right, so we got that right there. Let me go ahead and I'm just going to yeah, scrape that off the stone. This is probably not the best usage of my resources. But I am interested 
in what kind of buff we're going to be looking at for being well fed. There you go. Push that up, pal. Push that up. Get that in you. Nice. We got like 2,500 calories right now stored up and ready to go. Let's go back inside. It's time for a little bit of a rest. We are killing this interloper playthrough. We're doing very, very well. We've gotten quite lucky with a lot of our loot drops. We'll wake up from thirst before we actually make it through that 10 hours. But it'll be okay. Yeah, there we go. Don't worry too much about our water supply. I used up my coal, which is kind of bugging me. It auto-swapped me from sticks to coal on accident. Bit of a bummer, but I think I should still be able to work around it. Alright, so here we are. We're looking good. We're not underweight. We've still got a half a meter worth of calories left inside of us, which should last us the rest of the day, hopefully. Give us some time to kind of not worry about our hunger situation. My question is, they added in a new system where if you're well-fed, you get a buff to, like, your carrying weight and a bunch of stuff. My thought is maybe they added more food to Interloper because it would have been, like, next to impossible to keep that buff going in Interloper. And so maybe they increased the food volume on this difficulty just to make things a little bit simpler. I don't know. Check the truck real fast. Truck, what you got for me? Nothing? Not a thing? All right, truck. All right, truck. I think that I'm much more interested in making it back to our new home than I am exploring the dam right now. So, we're going to put some tracks behind us, and we're going to see if we can get to our forever home by heading on down the road here a little bit. We got crows around. Nothing too bad so far. Before we come around this corner, we're going to want to heal up a little bit on our endurance, just in case there's a wolf and we got to duck him. I don't see one. Normally, though, it's not this area where they tend to congregate. Normally, it's the area a little bit further on down the tracks, but sometimes you'll see a wolf over here. The temperature is too gnarly for us to pick up anything off of this deer right now as much as I would love to. I think a third deer height. Oh, there he is. I see him. Okay. We're going to have to diversify a little bit out here. We're going to cut down this way. This is a very, very dangerous path right here. There is a considerable chance that this way will be blocked by a wolf. But since the other way is blocked, there's only so many wolf spawns on a map. So, hopefully because that one was blocked off, this one will not be. But if it is... It's gonna suck. I think we're alright, though. I think we're looking good. Unfortunately, we're out of time for the day. So, my name is Splattercat. This is How to Be an Interloper. I hope it's helped out a little bit. If you're struggling with getting better at the long dark, I understand completely. I was right there with you when I first started playing. I was dying and losing status and playing on lower difficulties pretty constantly. It's okay. It's part of the learning experience. It's how you get better. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. Hi, do. Get the game down below and uh, take care, everybody. That's all I got for you.